It's Warren from Umpire Empire. Today we're discussing tips for having a great plate meeting. I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time. I've prepared a presentation to show through the video, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about having a great plate meeting. And it all starts with one thing, arriving on time. It happens to all of us guys. We can't get out of our full-time job at the time we intended to. We get stuck in traffic. All of these things happen, but you have to do your best to arrive on time. And what do I mean by arriving on time? You want to get to the game site early enough so that you can get dressed, have a thorough pregame with your partner, and I will have a video on pregames coming up. And then you want to be able to take the field with enough time to assess the field. You don't know what's going to have happened. Maybe you were at that field last night and you're the first person there this morning. But in the meantime, that volunteer who mows the lawn took out a section of fence or a sprinkler head broke. But you need to be able to assess the field, make sure there's anything that you may have to discuss with the coaches at the pregame meeting. Also, you want to be able to hit the field so that you have enough time to conduct your meeting and have it done before the time of the game is scheduled to start. So have it done before that first pitch. So while you're going out in the field, you got to look sharp, guys. Perception is reality. It sets the tone. You walk out on the field looking sharp. The coaches notice it, and it helps buy in, get buy-in from them. So maybe uh, they're saying, wow, okay, we got some good umpires today. You haven't said a peep. You haven't done anything, haven't made a call. You're just walking out on the field, and you've got that buy-in. Of, and that builds the confidence of the players, coaches, and spectators. So it helps already give you a better game and nothing has happened yet if you look the part. And then finally, if you have that questionable call that they maybe don't agree with, whether you're right or wrong, they're going to be less inclined to come out at you if you look the part. If you look like a slob, they're looking for the opportunity to come out on you and challenge you. So let's continue talking about looking sharp and perception being reality. So I want you to look at these two umpires I'm about to show you. And as you look at them, I want you to think, which of these umpires instills the most confidence in you? Which makes you feel you're in the hands of a dedicated professional? Who do you think is more knowledgeable? And if you're a coach, player, parent, who do you want calling your game? So let's take a look at umpire number one and umpire number two. Guys, we have to look sharp. We're human. We judge, and that means so do the players, coaches, fans, and parents. You want to get that initial buy-in. I don't know. Maybe the guy on the left, this is his very first game ever. He doesn't know the difference between a foul ball, foul tip. His feet are planted in concrete, so forget about rotations. And his uh, strike zone is, let's find that moving postage stamp. He could be a horrible umpire, but he's got the initial buy-in. While the guy on the right, he could be God's gift to umpiring. He could be a hustling machine, always in the right position, have be just more knowledgeable of rules than anybody you've ever known. But he doesn't look the part, so people are going to be looking at an ch opportunity to challenge him. So let's define looking sharp a little bit. We want to have a clean, well-pressed, properly fitting uniform. Polished shoes. Your bill of the cap worn parallel to the ground. And obviously, guys, unfortunately, I have to say it, the bill of the cap also has to face forward. You need to be clean and well-groomed. We can't have you coming out there like you just walked out of the woods and have all your necessary equipment and accessories with you. you that really sets the tone for the game. Plus, when you walk out on the field, you walk out on the field with confidence. You have your chin up, shoulders back, chest out. You own that field. That field belongs to you for that duration of your game. I don't care what school or league or anything who actually owns the field, that field is yours for the duration of that game. So act like it. You own that field. Speaking of looking sharp, look at that plate umpire. Look at those creases in his pants. But anyways, let's talk about actually having your meeting. Uh, you're going to greet the coaches with a smile and a handshake. Guys, I don't care what happened last night, the last time you were there, Bygones are bygones. We start with a clean slate. If, you, if their names aren't already on the lineup card, write them on the lineup card if you're the plate guy. As the base guy, I also carry a lineup card holder with just note cards in it, and I'll write the coaches' names in it. 
even if the names are on the lighten up card, I'm going to write it again to help build that muscle, brain muscle memory so that I can address them by name. It really helps in diffusing situations. So then you're going to review your lineup cards. And I've been told uh, it's a courtesy to collect and review the home team's lineup card first. So I always do that. Now, let's talk about our meeting. Uh, the base umpire, your job is to remain silent. After your initial handshakes and introductions and small talk, uh, it's time for you to be quiet. You need to set, keep the tone positive and upbeat. You've already set a positive tone by looking sharp, so keep that positive, upbeat tone going. Speak with some enthusiasm. Show that you're happy to be there. You don't want to be like Eeyore, hello, guys. Uh, you want to have some liveliness, some enthusiasm and life about baseball and being there. Uh, have your plate meeting clear, concise, well-rehearsed, and organized. Guys, as umpires, we'll sit in front of the mirror and we'll do strike calls and safe calls in front of the mirror. We'll get in our plate stance in front of the mirror to see how we look. But you need to spend that same amount of time rehearsing your plate conference so that you, when you get out there, it sounds great. So rehearse that really well. And be sure that you include any safety or sportsmanship statements that are required by the groups you're working. Once again, ground rules should be clear and concise. If it's, a, say, varsity or higher, let the home coach take you around the field. If it's a rec game, uh, you take control as the plate umpire and ask any questions as needed, but you do not need to spend a lot of time uh, going over those ground rules. I always use the plate meeting as an opportunity to ask for more baseballs. No matter what the level, unless they filled my bags up, I'm going to ask for more baseballs. And then I want to emphasize this is not the time to be issuing warnings at all. No warnings to, are to be issued at the plate. So that leads me to my next thing, don'ts for your meeting. Don't socialize with the coaches. I don't care if one of the coaches is your next door neighbor, your kids are married, you've known each other for 30 years, it doesn't matter. Your role when you're on that field is the umpire. You're not his buddy any longer. So socializing with the coaches is out. Keep it cordial and professional. You don't need to address every little gap, rabbit hole, etc. Ground rules state if the ball leaves the field, we will take care of it. So just go with that. If there's a, something that needs to be addressed, like something a little bit wonky, a little bit different, uh, where lines might need to be drawn or anything along those lines, by all means, address the big issues. But you can spend an hour at some fields hitting every little rabbit hole. Don't bring up past issues. I said before, you're start letting the coaches start with a clean slate, and so are you. I've heard, oh, and last time I was here, you sat on your bucket and chirped the whole game. I'm not having that today. Don't bring up the past issues. It sets the tone to be negative. Also, this is not the time to give a rules clinic. By all means, be cordial, be approachable, and if they have a quick question, answer it quickly. But if it's something that's more detailed, you're just going to have to ask them if you can save that for another time. And once again, I can't emphasize enough, the plate meeting is not the time to issue warnings. So you've concluded your plate meeting. Coaches have gone back to their dugouts. What happens now? Well, you're now actively managing the game. You're counting the warm-up pitches. You're getting, doing thing, administrative things, getting more baseballs, or writing down the coach's name on the lineup card, folding the lineup card neatly into your lineup card holder, doing those type of things. And then you have your parting words with your partner. So what's next? Guys, it's just time to give them a great game. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tip on having a great plate meeting. If you did, please subscribe, like, share our videos, and Put in the comments below. Let us know what some of your quick tips are or carry the discussion over onto umpireempire.com. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next edition of Quick Tips.